Episode four of The Acolyte is out and it's all over the map. So my commitment is to give you a balanced review of this. So I want to talk about the high points and I'm, I, yeah, I'm going to talk about the low points. Don't worry, okay? So I'm not a shill, but I'm not a hater. I'm just going to give you that middle view, all right? So look, it was not the greatest dialogue writing ever. It was very on the nose. I'll give it that. Did it take some moments to try to score some cheap political points? It did. I have to admit that. Uh... But the ending, so I know some people really disagree with this, but I actually thought the ending was quite awesome. Like the mood and the music and just everything in the very, just the last few minutes, okay? Just the lead up there was like, I could feel the tension building. I'm like, oh crap, it's gonna go down. And then this super OP bad guy shows up and I've got some predictions about that bad guy. I predict it is a female Sith, but not a Sith, probably like a Dathomir witch type, in fact, I predict that it's their mom. She's their mom. Whose mom? Well, I mean, the twins. Which mom? The human. The one who's clearly their mom. They're humans. It's, she's human. Anyway, I forget her name. Uh, but anyway, the you know leader of that coven, right? She somehow survived. About, you know, I know she's on the ground, dead, whatever, in episode three. I think she's survived somehow, and it's her under that mask. Yes, I've also heard the theory that maybe it's her friend that was walking through the forest with her, trying to help her find the Wookiee that she hung upside down. I don't know. Now, I will say this. It's interesting. With May. Okay, so when May finds out that her sister is still alive, it really shakes her, right? And so she says, well, everything changes. So now I I want to go turn myself into the Jedi, and I'll tell him who the bad guy master is. Why would she suddenly change like that? See, at first, that really troubled me. I'm like, well, that's kind of a dumb story switch up. Like, after she's murdered some people, now she suddenly has regrets and is like... Except, I think it ties directly back to that episode three, back in their past. So what that tells me is that May did not start the fire. That there was, in fact, something that the Jedi did, or she perceived that they did, that caused her sister to die in her mind. That she thought Osha was dead. And so now that she knows Osha's alive, she's like, oh, that's not true. I had a misunderstanding. I was lied to. Whatever. So now things are different. Maybe the Jedi aren't the monsters that I thought and I'm becoming the monster. Okay, I can change. There's there's a way to redemption. There's a way back. And so that's why she suddenly flips. Now, that had better be paid off. That's important. They need to show why that flip happened so suddenly and why it was meaningful to her based on maybe some other small flashback that they can stick in there. I don't want a whole episode of flashbacks again, but maybe a little bit um, to try to connect that. If they don't, that's going to really stick in my craw. That's going to be a problem for me. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see Mr. Wookiee Jedi do any awesome Wookiee Jedi stuff other than for like one second in the previous episode because uh, he was dead when they showed up, had a big lightsaber slash right in his chest. So that's unfortunate. You could, you know, certainly see it coming as she's walking up to him, but it still did a good job building the tension. And he was, you know, had all those markings all over the walls, right? The same markings that we saw on their mom's head and on May's head. And so that tells me, yes, Definitely, there's a connection to that original coven, and that is the mom, I'm telling you. Okay, back to the dialogue for a minute. Man, it was clunky. They just, oh gosh, too much telling, and especially, oh man, any any interactions with this particular Jedi. Oh, I don't think the actress is doing a bad job per se, but the man, they gave her some rough lines. Now, the Jedi who interests me still is Soul. I actually really enjoy anything that Soul is in and talking. He, with whatever dialogue they give him, he does a good job with it. Like, he knows, he knows how to use it. Uh, I appreciate that actor. And when he talks to, uh, the little head Jedi, uh, lady who, I, I don't know her name, uh, th that's green, uh, those are interesting See, Those are getting more interesting. She's like, ah, oh, we don't want the high council to hear about this. We just want our chump council here to deal with this locally. Because <laughs> I don't like the, the politics, is, you know, get in trouble for that. That would be bad. Now, look, I know there's a lot of strong opinions out there about this right now. I've, I've looked around on YouTube. I can see that, the you know, all the real popular YouTubers. I'm not one of them, okay? I'm just a chump. But, like, there's a lot of strong opinions that people really hated this episode. They feel like it, it just, you know, keeps getting worse and worse. Okay, I can acknowledge the writing is getting rougher. The dialogue, for sure, is getting more uh, immature, more juvenile. Like, like not, it's just not very sophisticated, okay? I can acknowledge that. 
Um, I also think the actors are doing their best with what they've got to work with. Okay. So they need to bring in a dialogue coach for some. They need to just bring in some different writers to help spruce it up. The story itself is not necessarily bad. It is salvageable. And I think with maybe some different direction, it could still be a very compelling and interesting story. There's a story there to tell. Um, I just really hope the payoff comes with maybe a few explanations from the past. Uh, they, they, and man, I hated that they cut it off right where they did. I mean, there was a lot of tension there, but man, I was like, okay, let's see the battle. It's better not turn into like, if, if any of you guys watched, uh, the Percy Jackson series that came out on Disney Plus, it was actually really good. But one of my complaints about it was that the action scenes always cut off like way too fast. Like they were super short and then it just moved on. Now there's been some really good action scenes in the Acolyte where she's fighting, well, one or two, where she's fighting against, uh, the the first couple of Jedi that she tries to take out and and it's some cool action scenes. I hope that that continues and that we get some more good action, good fighting with lightsabers uh, would be nice. And I mean the the original previews made it look like that was going to be the case, and hopefully that's Episode Five. Uh, so we'll see. Fingers crossed that that uh, that continues. But what did you guys think? Do you think I'm full of crap and I just need to you know accept defeat? Well. I'm an optimistic guy, and I want to give them a fair chance. Also, let's all remember, okay, even if you hate it, it's fine. You don't have to love it. I don't love it right now, but I'm interested enough to keep going. There's real people behind the scenes, okay, even if you disagree with them and I don't agree with all of them. But they're still people, right? So we want to make sure that we treat them with, uh, you know, kindness and respect, even in our reviews. Uh, but, hey, fingers crossed we're going to get a good episode five. We'll see.